We are back, we are back, we are back, Backstreet is back, we are back with another video after spending two weeks in German with the Germans. We are back with another video and it's so refreshing to come back onto bikes. I was scrolling my way through the MXB mods page and I come across the 2022 HRC factory collection by Fab MX1, which I will link in the bottom. And he's done uh, a numerous amount of bikes. He's done Ken Roxon's, Jet Lawrence's, and James Stewart. And I, James Stewart, I hear you say that man's not on a Honda. Well, recently he was pictured, videoed on the um, Deegan Ride Day, and he came out on this beautiful steed right here. This number seven Honda, yummy, and um, it looked amazing. And someone jumped on that. Uh, by Fab MX1, and he's made an amazing replica. And if you've actually watched the James Stewart podcast out recently, I'll link that below as well. You can see his Honda in the showroom as well. So I know it's not uh, normally a bike you would ride, but the creator has done an absolute fantastic job of capturing all the little details here. Um, and this bike looks awesome. I haven't downloaded the 7 kit, I'm still rocking my own kit, but I've done like a little Fox. Uh, red riding just to get this going and we're actually here on the JS7 compound so let's jump into it let's have a little bit of a blast because I haven't played bikes in a good couple of weeks and I was I was getting a little bit sick of oh my god what a start the power of the Honda I was getting a little bit burnt out of bikes so I wasn't enjoying it much and um, it's just nice to jump back on I'm using the filter here the reshade filter that's come out recently I think I've, I've got it to a point of where it works okay it's not too bright it's not burning out your eyeballs um, uh, and, and yeah, we're just here enjoying some JS7, and this is going to shock a few people, but I've only ever rode here once. <laughs> I know it's shocking, and um, I've maybe spun like five laps around the track, so uh, I don't really know my way around. I've done a little bit today, <clears throat> I just banged on a couple laps, and we're just going to go with the flow, and... Um, uh, and see how this goes. But the, the reason I did this was because I listened to the JS7 podcast and uh, I saw this factory pack come out. And he's James has recently been on the podcast, and um, it really made me realise how much I missed James Stewart. <clears throat> and this also may be a shocker. I wasn't the biggest diehard James Stewart fan. I really wasn't. I was um, I was an Art Carmichael fan. I was a Ryan Villapoto fan, and I started watching around 2005, 2006, and then seriously in 2007. And I was always rooting for the angry ginger that is Ryan Villapoto. And it's not been until recent years that I've really grown to appreciate and miss James Stewart, what he brought to the sport, his personality, his ridiculous talent riding level, and 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 the way he would just do things that no one would ever think of. And he even coined the term stewable, which like, oh, is that stewable? And that's the, that's like the measuring stick people use. Oh, James would do it, so like, it, it must be possible. And and hearing him recently on the podcast, I was just so happy to, to see him back in the sport. And it it really made me think like, we take our favourite riders for granted. And even if you don't love a rider and you're like, oh, I'm not the biggest fan of Eli Tomac or whatever appreciate oh my god what is this appreciate them while they're around because the the time in the sport is super short you know they'll come and go and and you'll you'll wish you'll have made the most of of that era and where they were and i i'm a bit like not upset but i'm a bit sad that i didn't appreciate james more at the time and i missed his era on the one two five days and um, I only really got to see him when he was on, where are we going, straight, uh, on Kawasaki. And when he, I, I saw him have his perfect season and some of the amazing battles he had with Carmichael when Carmichael was still on Suzuki. And uh, I went back and watched some of the footage and, and I just missed the guy, you know. It's just nice to have his presence in the sport and hearing him on the podcast, he seems like he's in a much better place. I know he shied away from the sport a little bit, he was done with riding. And it was really cool to see him just come out and, and talk to people and just just be excited about being back. And the thing that really surprised me was he was like, yeah, I watch everything. I watch the AMA, I watch the GP, I watch Canadian motocross. He even said, oh my God, he even said he watches some of the British stuff. He's like, if there's racing, I'm watching. So it sounds like he's in a much happier, healthy place. And, and we need more of that within, within the industry. I want to see these guys come back and... You know, when Ryan, Ryan Villapote has been dubbed the best retired guy ever, and I would like to see Ryan Dungey do a bit more and, and see these guys a bit more involved because when the, the pressure's off them and they're not so focused on being a racer, you see the person come out rather than the rider, and it makes you realise actually these guys 
have a lot to offer the sport still with their insight, their knowledge, their stories, and everything else. And it was just, it just made me happy. It was like that the reunion I didn't know I needed. And um, with everything going on in the world right now, we need as much as that as we can possibly get. You know, I, I went to see the Spider-Man No Way Home film uh, on opening day the other day, and I literally was like, "This is this has made 2021 better." Like. I, cried like four or five times i won't give you any spoilers whatsoever because that would be the naughty no no thing to do but the film's fantastic go and watch it because i i couldn't recommend it enough and um it is the same thing with the james stewart stuff i oh my god i've left my whatsapp on i am sorry um you know it's just it's just something i didn't know i needed in my life and i'm really happy to see james back in the sport and uh, he looked, this Honda looked cool, and uh, I've never really rode the 450 Honda much, I did a little sprint with it for a little bit, because I'm a Ken Roxon fanboy, um, but it's not bad, I'm, I'm running pretty much the default setup, I've lowered the tyre pressure, um, I'm running 105 sag, gone a little bit stiffer on the front spring, and uh, it seems pretty solid, I haven't had to do much to it, obviously it's got a crap ton of power, and uh, yeah, it's just a beautiful looking bike, so well done to the creator, and I, I want to highlight these creators a bit more and showcase them a bit more, because I was on the podcast with G-Dub, and he, he really said something that resonated with me, that, you know, although I sat here and planned out this video for 20 minutes, I wrote down talking points, I wrote down what I wanted to say, I'll spend quite a bit, oh my god, a bit of time on the thumbnail and the thing, and shooting it and everything else, all in all, it's probably maybe an hour or two's work to, to pump out this video, you know, whereas... A creator of a, a bit of content or a track they could be on that for months and without them we wouldn't have anything to, to really do the, the game would get boring quickly and we need to highlight that for our creators we need to show them that we do care and uh, we do support them and I will be doing an upcoming creator showcase where I just I, I've got one lined up already where I take a track I take a bike I take a piece of kit I link them all in the bottom and we, we give these guys a proper shout out no, not just oh this is this by this and I ride around you know, really give back to the community a little bit as best as we can. And if I ever become successful on YouTube and uh, ever do make money off it, then I'd like to, you know, give some of that back towards the creators that have really done a lot for me. And and if I find something I really like, then I, I'm going to donate them some money on PayPal because they they deserve it and it will give them that little bit of motivation. So, you know, it's I'm not saying YouTube is easy by any stretch of the means. I'm still an absolute beginner at it. I'm still finding my way. And uh, YouTube is incredibly difficult to get good on. However, when we're just talking about MX bikes, it would be easy for me just to just just to shoot a video and oh my gosh, and go back to that and and you never see the ins and outs working of, of how the game is developed and, and how things are made. And and we should we should be thankful for everyone because as a whole, this community has been great to me. You guys were fantastic on uh, the response to the motor vlog and I, I watched it back myself and I'm so self-critical. I was like, oh god, I should have shot this all in this camera angle. I need more footage here, I need to be better here, so episode 2 will be will be a lot better. Hello, that was a nice little surprise, little tumble wumble and on the bike we go, and we should, everything happened like that. And um, yeah, the, the, the response was amazing and I, I really am grateful for everything that's going on right now. My goal is still a thousand subs and then I will start to live stream and everything else. And uh, we are on the road to that, I appreciate that I'm not the best at the game, I'm not the best entertaining, and I, I probably never will be, but if you're here and watching this, you are appreciated, I read all your comments, you know, I try and be better, just 1% better every single time, and that, that that's the goal of every video, be better at bike, get a better thumbnail, you know, be more creative, be funnier, put something interesting out there that someone would want to hear, and uh, start to write down videos before I, before I do them, storyboard them and stuff, and hopefully that will... That will pay dividends eventually, and I, I will get better. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I, I rambled about myself a little bit. This was meant to be about JS7, but I'm just really happy to see him back. I'm just I'm just grateful to have his perspective, and hopefully with his podcast, he, he will give us a bit more behind-the-scenes look and, and the insight into the industry a little bit more and, and why he stepped away. And Maybe he won't go too personal, but he seems in a happy, healthy place, and I, I'm just happy for him, you know what I mean? It's... it's you know when you're in a good place when you can be happy for someone else and I've absolutely, you know, if I see someone being successful and, and they're happy to be back then all the power to them, I, I really do appreciate him being back and you know, I uh, I was talking to a couple of friends the other day that I, I, I'm not a fan of the Gypsy Tells podcast host and you know, we all have our preferences and I recently listened to him talk to Chase Sexton and he's he's warming to me a little bit, he's of course a little, little bit not my personality type uh, he comes across as a little bit douchey, but when he explained all the work he's put in and everything else, 
even if you're not a fan of someone's personality, you can admire the hard work that someone puts in. You know, there's a couple of YouTube content creators in the MX Bikes community that I'm not a fan of their personality, but I can see the work that they put in, and I can respect the work that they put in, and I can respect the time it takes to do anything creative in life and, and work hard at it. So that's something I learned as I got a little bit older. Just because I doesn't don't like someone, don't mean I can't respect and, and not be jealous and and just support them in, in, in some way or another or at least try to emulate that success as well we spend so much of our time thinking why me why me why me and being super bitter when in reality we just need to to work hard figure out what we're doing wrong and uh stop hating on people and realizing that actually the reason i'm probably hating is because i'm a little bit jealous i'm a little bit this i'm a little bit that and uh, i should be doing better and i can focus on what i can control so you know wow we've gone a little bit deep here already you need three laps into bikes um, but yeah, this this track is amazing. I, I probably will hit up the Supercross tracks as well. And I'm not very good at the actual track itself, as you can see. Oh my goody gumdrops. But I just wanted to show you guys a little bit about this Honda. And although I'm riding my kit, uh, the track was amazing. The bike was amazing. Let's have a little look at it. Where are we? Let's orbit, orbit, orbit. Oh God. Uh, where is it? Where the hell's the... There we go. It just... Yeah. I'm thoroughly impressed of it it looks amazing good job by the creator i might even bust out a few videos as well on some supercross tracks when i finally learn how to do that while i'm covered in crap from falling off so much but yeah thank you guys for watching um i really do that's my controller doing this crap again i really do appreciate the support and although i'm not the best youtuber right now i may never be i am trying to make improvements for you guys so um yeah just just nice to get back out into the community release another video and uh, do some good things so on to the next and uh hope you guys enjoyed watching that and do me a favor if you've made it this far comment your best js7 memory just something it could be his racing career his statistics or anything like that go in the comments below and let me know what your favorite js7 memory is and uh, let's reminisce a little bit because that's always nice to do but yeah hope you guys are well hope you guys have a good time over the holidays and i will catch you guys later peace 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 love 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 love